my phone. Hello, live. Hello, everyone. Now we're live and we're here with a few people around. Uh, well, first, good morning and good evening, good afternoon, whatever, wherever you are. I don't know where you're connecting from, but thank you for joining. Today is a, a special day for us. We're releasing our new website and we're going to discuss about uh, building websites and our experience in building our own website, which is particularly interesting because it's the first experiment for us for building something so thorough and profound. But before that, we're just coming back from holidays. And I would like to maybe ask the question first to kind of a little bit break the, the ice and get people to warm up, you know, their fingers on their on their keyboards. Where did you go in the holidays? Where did you go? What was your holidays about? You want us to start? Yeah, go ahead. Um, me, I went to. It was a. It's not. We. It's not like we just came back. Huh? We came back a month ago. So now it feels a bit uh, far. Ah, yeah, it's far away. Yeah, right? mm. just that the last meetup was like mid December. So me, I went one week to Morocco because I'm Moroccan, and uh, one week to the south of France in a place called Liban. It's a nice place. So that was cool. Nice. You? So you went. So you, you spent you spent time in Morocco. It wasn't cold there, right? No, no. It was, it was like warm. t-shirts in December. That was really nice. Myself, I didn't go anywhere. I guess. Or See, did I? You went. You I went. Skied, I went. You I, I skied. Oh yeah. I yeah, know you're right. planning. It was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, that, that was yeah. That was then. Yeah. That was in January. Actually. Yeah. So yes. So yeah. I'm, um, I have this corner in the mountains in the Alps where we go every year, like two or three times. Uh, I'm getting addicted to this uh, corner. It's pretty nice. It's really very beautiful, high mountains and a lot of snow. And I started learning how to snowboard. Now I never skied or snowboard or anything like that. I'm come. I come from Syria. We don't have that kind of mm. thing, you know. We don't have these kind of sports. So I'm getting. I'm starting that, and I guess this is the first time where I enjoyed actually the sensation of uh, snowboarding and all. You know, snow. The, do you, have you ever? Now you skied. You skied. Yeah, you told me. Skied, yeah. So tell me about your holidays. <laughs> what did you do? Uh, I went uh, skiing, yeah, but um, the snow wasn't uh, there, so. <laughs> wasn't oh, yeah. there, but they make f some fake snow or something. <laughs> yeah, right? they make some fake snow, but you know that's not the, the <laughs> same. It's not thing. the same sensation, yeah, right? So, but you skied. Yeah, I skied. Yeah, uh, I I spent like um, almost fifteen years of my uh, uh, life in uh, French Alps. So really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so you there ski we well. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, uh, we don't have that. Okay. He's a champion. Okay. <laughs> you well, well. Uh, I don't have like Olympic uh, <laughs> Games <laughs> championship, but no, I ski. That's okay. no. Okay, me, I'm a beginner. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, and you? I'm a beginner too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You can come with us. We're going to Chamonix next week. So yeah, lots we'll of be beginners. <laughs> lots of beginners in our groups. So your holidays, you didn't go to holiday. You were building the website, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Not no, I, I was uh, I was just with uh, my family for uh, Christmas and everything, and that's all basically. Family, they're family time is good time. Paris? No, they are uh, in Nantes. Ah, oh, okay, Nantes. nice, nice, cool. And what did, did the others do? No snow. What are boarding in Syrian sports? Is it surfing or something? I don't know. <laughs> you're supposed to know. You're what are what are boarding? Like you put the board on the water or something? Surfing, right? Or something? I don't know. I I, I don't know. Honestly, I'm I'm very bad at this. Or maybe I'm not Syrian. No, you I know. am Syrian. <laughs> <laughs> but now I don't I don't know about this sport. I don't know about waterboarding or surfing or anything like that. Maybe there are people that do that, but I didn't know about it. Like what's the main sport in Syria? Well, know? football. People play a lot of football. Okay. I guess, uh, yeah, mainly that, a lot of football on the beach. Yeah, because we have a lot of sun, right? So mostly people are on the beach playing okay, okay. with a ball. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of it. Matthew says, love the new animations on the website. Yeah, I was reading it. This is beautiful, yeah. right? That this, this is like a, these are the guys. Kudos these for are these the two guys. guys. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. So today yeah. is a lot about what we, you know, the, the work that we, we did on our website uh, we're happy to release this website. There is a lot of uh, a story behind. And, uh, you know, I remember. So I don't know which version of the website of Prismic this one is. Uh, probably the fifth or something. So I've, I've been through a lot of versions of the, our website. But it was always like kind of a one-man task. You know, like, okay, you have to build a website and someone hel is helping. But the thinking behind wasn't there. Like, I would will be either me or s and someone else writing the content 
and then you know iterating a little bit on the design and then we do like two or three pages so that actually the, the website was an accumulation of five versions of the website yeah it was like even super hard to update because we had like four different apps some in scala so very 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 yeah, old pages and some in next some in Next. so yeah it was it was a big big I don't know, mix uh, up of different uh, Yeah, a little bit uh, of that. And also content, there's some content that is extremely old and some uh, content is new and some in the middle and it wasn't even coherent. Um, and that's that's a big change is that we saw it like, okay, so that question is like, what do we want to do our, with our website? And then the question after is like, what's the purpose of a website? And we started these kind of philosophical questions about <laughs> 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 what why do people need websites? <laughs> <laughs> and then why are we on earth and wha wha what's the mission and all of that. No, but we, we asked the question yes, of yes, mission yes, dome. Yes. Yeah. But anyway, and then, uh, you know, um, a lot of things happened and, you know, we met you guys, we started working with you um, and it was, it was a good collaboration. But there were many questions that I think that today uh, startups on companies in our size or even in bigger size are, are asking. There are a lot of questions that they are asking and I would think maybe our experience can answer some of their questions um, about the pur purpose of things and how you go about uh, such, a, such a big change, you know? Yeah, yeah. So the story behind the website is kind of what you, what you mentioned. Like we wanted to change things because we felt like we didn't have the right foundations in general. So we wanted to like clean the foundations and do something like proper. And so I think we started working together a while ago. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even know exactly <laughs> when. Um, so I'm, let's maybe start with a quick intro of who are these two people who are with us first. So they're from an agency called Hervé and I'm putting the, the link of their website um, in the chat. And so it's a design agency, right? Yeah. In Paris, not very far from where we are. And I think the story of how we know you is that our designer internally uh, liked your work or knew you from before and so they wanted to work with you when we wanted to redo our uh, like visual brand um, it was kind of a complex story because they wanted to rebrand Prismic the designers internally but uh, it wasn't really clear how we wanted to like go about it and so um, it was great for us to work with you guys uh, but also it also like kind of forced us to go through a whole positioning work on ourselves to better yeah. like orient how we how we address like the whole project there are many ways to go about this story because yeah. there are many aspects to it yeah one of them is like Anthony was working with Benjamin honestly it's very hard to please Anthony in design you know two designers just for context for anyone yeah, here who designers. doesn't know Anthony, Anthony and, and Benjamin, Benjamin both are designers <laughs> and it's hard to please Anthony because he wants something that is beautiful but very very clean he doesn't like noisy stuff and we start try it try it right and it's like okay let's bring an agency but it was hard to find an agency that Anthony would would like and then but you guys Roma, you had another experience of working with Weno am I am I wrong yeah yeah, 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 yeah I'm right yes Weno. so and and Weno were actually a client of Prismic yeah. as well right so that actually also <laughs> maybe how, yeah. helped yeah. a little bit yeah we, we loved Weno uh, <laughs> yeah and maybe Roman you can tell us before we jump into this specific project like a few projects that you worked on or like the kinds of work that you you do at yeah. Hervé so <laughs> ARV, we are uh, still like small team. We are uh, ten designers. I, I I will not say ten designers because we are nine designers and one project manager now. Okay. Uh, and we are uh, super happy to have a project manager. <laughs> <because> <laughs> it helps. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> but yeah, we mainly focus on uh, on branding. Um, that's also doing product design, uh, motion design, and illustration. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to get kind of the full picture of what we can do uh, and we really like uh, handling like uh, not just um, sometimes like marketing website but also see how it looks on a product yeah. uh, so because we think it creates experiences that are more I don't know like uh, more consistent so mm -hmm. that's uh, and uh, yeah so yeah uh, small team um, but um, yeah really uh, how do you say that um yeah we can work on like a lot of different projects yeah. so and uh mainly like we just released one big project lastly uh it was uh it is for uh Cartier. Mm. uh they are um they wanted to build a year book um so uh ev every year at the end of the year they printed uh, like for their link. clients uh, yearbook mm. uh to explain what they've done uh, during the year 
and they wanted to do the phys the digital version of it so they they asked us to work with them on that uh, that was a really great project and we use prismic nice <laughs> for our content and mm -hmm. uh, yeah that's uh, that was a great experience that's and really cool yeah it, uh, it was like six different uh, developers on it because wow. there is like a pretty simple grid at the when you enter the website but then we have like a uh, webgl uh, article and things like that so and for this website you did also the the development then or no yeah we I we mm, we ask like people that we know like developer yeah. external developer because we you. don't have developer yeah you, you, sa you said only designers yeah. and <laughs> one product manager but uh, yeah, yeah we yeah so that's cool but al also you, you you love to play with with latest technologies right I I figured this to play with us latest technologies oh like, yeah 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 <laughs> like and you know with animation yeah, with yeah. 3D with we we try to and that's something also we try uh, on Prismic website the new website like. Um, I'm sure a lot of you already heard about uh, Spline and uh, like I think like um, browser now are like super developed and then we can do crazy things uh, and like uh, Spline is really like uh, making like uh, live 3D in, uh, in a browser like as you can do on Figma uh, and we at some point we wanted to since uh, as you can see on the new Prismic website and branding we have this kind of like isometric uh, blocks. Uh, we wanted to try what if we do like real 3D and yeah. then you can like just play or interact with things. Uh, maybe we in will the browser. Uh, yeah, in the yeah. browser. Mm -hmm. uh, we we haven't released this version, but it's ca it's a, it's a way also to maybe yeah. Yeah. go yeah. further. And uh, yeah, that's um, that's cool. <laughs> it's really cool. And me, like I remember when I saw you for the first time uh, was very impressed with the kind of also companies like when uh, when you said it was like it's 10 designers we can't imagine like the nice companies and nice projects you worked on so like uh, there's some cool names and so that's also was super cool for us to work with you i still want to hear from the people in the chat uh, well already maybe about your holidays that you didn't tell me about but also about what you think of the website like check it out did we did we put the link here uh, yeah at the start of the chat but maybe so we can re-put the link Please go and visit the, the, the website and tell us what do you think about it? Anything that you see that you like or, you know, you're not sure about anything that you comes to your mind, please tell us in the chat and we can we're going to discuss it all also as well. Also, I would like to hear a little bit from FX. You we're not hearing you here. Yeah, right? okay. How is <laughs> going at Hervé? Is it a good place to be? It's a good place. So uh, basically, uh, I was in apprenticeship. Uh, when I was working on the Prismic mm -hmm. uh, website, mm -hmm. and now, I'm <coughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm a I'm a full time uh, designer uh, now. That's cool. So I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty happy to to be at uh, Hervé because it's basically kind of my family. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it felt like you've been working for on a lot of websites. Me, me, like we worked a lot with the FX, so mm. it it felt like you you've built a lot of websites before. At least you had opinions on a lot of things, so. Yeah, because so before being a designer, I, I was a developer, uh, okay. a creative developer. So I worked uh, as a freelancer, and also I have uh, I had uh, internships. Okay. Uh, different uh, internships, so I worked on a uh, yeah on a few uh, projects, uh, website projects. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what's really great to have FX on the project because since he. He used he Prismic he also. used to be yeah. developer, he used to yeah. use uh, Prismic. Still and a <laughs> <developer>. <laughs> he's still a bit <laughs> developer, but uh, we consider him as a designer now. Yeah. And he's super good at it. And uh, the fact that he understands how Prismic and like, uh, development in, in general works, it really helps to also, for a simple thing as like just uh, an animation or an, an illustration, yeah. he get it uh, pretty fast. And so it was uh, really easy yeah. to and the propositions were really really relevant it wasn't uh, something completely off because yeah. again you understood what the product yeah. was you're, and you're how relevant. it worked you're relevant. So <laughs> you were relevant <laughs> 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 I have so. Jérôme, Jérôme says FX is the best he's your brother or something <laughs> no it's, it's uh, our uh, it's our project manager yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> okay. so what's your favorite page on the website which page you say like I really like this page it worked well I don't know. Uh, I mean, 
the whole website is uh, is good. You have it's to choose. Really great, but <laughs> you have to choose. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we have a lot of animation on, on the homepage, so I think. Uh, yeah, I, and I like the the, this fluid. When you scroll, this fluid, the, the fact that the blocks get in and it's a fixed layout, yeah, layout yeah. on the on the left, and it's pretty fluid. Isn't like. Uh, you don't you don't feel it awkward whenever like there's mm -hmm. something with the scroll sometimes it feels awkward and the scroll is not working mm -hmm. yeah. this one is pretty fluid and i guess it gives a little bit also of time for animation to start so y y you're not throwing all animations together or something like yeah. it feels it feels natural yeah. it feels good right maybe that's a good moment to ask pierre Yves, who's operating the studio here to share my screens so that we can go like we can look at the website and at the same time you can comment on this scroll parts so you were saying this part, right? When I scroll, yeah, like here, for instance, you go, you go here, and then when you start scrolling, yeah, see, like uh, there is a moment where it changes the animation, but it waits a little bit, and and that's good because if you're scrolling, you might not know that there is an yeah. animation on the right, but since it waits a little bit, and then you see, and then you stop, say, oh wow, okay, there's something else here, and then you wait, and then you keep scrolling. I, I like that fact. Yeah. Me, I like the pro the um, the developer page. I I feel like we outperformed on the copy and how much we spent time how much time we spent on on this on page. The copy? Yes. Which one? I like the developer one. I like. Um, here's why you love Prismic. I like uh, it's headless. Nice is our game changer. I like lots of parts. Lots of parts to love it. I like cool. the I, I like the developer is, is content. Is it like Prismic that I slash developers? Built developers by developers. Mm? Yeah. Yeah. Developers? yeah. 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 I don't know. I felt like this one is really like, it's clear but still developer friendly. I like the fact that it's dark mode. That was an <laughs> idea of I don't know which yeah. one of you, but I, I like the mood of it. So yeah. me, I like it. And then the connection with the slice machine pages, is nice. Really nice. Yeah. The, the home the home page is pretty pretty nice. I like also the content manager uh, page because it's uh, it's clean. There is a space, you know. It's not too stuffed with stuff, and I, I like that, you know, the little little space that it gives. You know, it's it's more content oriented. Mm -hmm. uh, if you compare it to the others, it's less it's illustrations. But I guess I f I feel that it has space. I don't know. It gives me a good feeling. Yeah. Um, there is. Who was it? So Matthew tell yeah we talked about Matthew telling like he loves the animations on the on the website, and there there is the someone about the pricing page who tells no 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 no. Well, there is our Andre who says the four o four is the nicest. <laughs> well, there is a little um, yeah, uh, illustration on the four o four. Yeah, go ahead, try something. Ah. <laughs> That was like, we thought 404 was going to be hard to make and we were like, we need to brainstorm <laughs> and everything. And then we came once on a meeting and we were like, hey, so I fixed, we need to think about the 404. And he was like, yeah, he played with something. And then he presented this and we're like, okay, it works. <laughs> and that's that's how, that's the story of the 404. It wasn't my, my illustration it wasn't? actually. Yeah, uh, okay. but I just forgot to, to put it on the on the Figma. It was, it's really nice. The, like, uh, we thought 404 would have been uh, like something we need to like brainstorm on, uh -huh. uh, like kind of passively for three weeks or something. And it was it super fast for us. So it was your illustration? No. No, someone else. Yeah. Someone dreamt about it or something. Because it looks like a dream of someone. <laughs> like I need a 404. And then you're you're dreaming and then you're lost in your dream. It's like, lost is the thing. Let's put something or where we're lost or something, right? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, and also some uh, show pricing page looks awesome. I re uh, really clear and slick. Can I start hovering on the off the free tier yeah and so someone else talked about yeah. this so that's something that we had lots of debates on and it's one of the things i need to observe like hot jar recordings on because it was it was a it was a debate will people see that there's this like hover effect that shows mm. that there's progressive pricing or yeah. people think that there's like a jump between zero and a hundred so it's nice to see that it's actually clear for people alex yeah. is saying that your screen has a little green cast to it so maybe there's something you can do about it i don't know i have no idea or green this cast? is maybe coming from, from obs know. or something anyway OBS. um that's cool and, and yusuf is, is saying the deck like design in pricing page is so nice well, they like this the is the deck like yeah mm -hmm. okay nice well actually so here what happened is there is a day where Noha comes and it's like, oh yeah, think we still have the pricing page to review. It's like, okay, let's have a look. And it's like, seriously, Noha, you're changing the pricing page today? <laughs> 
Why are you doing that to yourself? You know who is behind the pricing grid? There is marketing. There is um, revenue. revenue. There is, uh, well, everyone in the company is going to be interested in this change. Why are you opening this box? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, well, we have to redesign it in some way. And I was like, yeah, well, well then we came up with this uh, solution and it seems to please people so that we don't have to completely redo the whole the whole page. Mm. Yeah, no, um, well, we'll see. We see how 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 people use it, but uh, yeah. Do you, you know the night shift thing? No, no. What's night shift? Well, there is a button where say night shift, and then it changes the colors of the screen. Oh, no, I don't. Don't worry know. about it. Okay. Well, people, the 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 actual website that doesn't doesn't have this green cast. Go <laughs> check it for yourself, and you will see what it looks like. But maybe I have. Yeah, I I I'm the kind of person who has the things to. So David Noe says, I like the simplicity a lot. I think the routing experience is a little bit laggy. Uh, it feels like the page is jumping around. Okay, we'll look at that and we'll try to um, fix it. I know we have a lot of things to talk about. Yes. But I like looking at the chat. So <laughs> go ahead. Maybe I will, I will Want continue. Want me to start? Uh, okay. You should, right? Okay. So. Um, oh, here, here's the question. Okay, Lucas is asking a question. Did you use scroll snap? You know what does that mean? No idea what that scroll is. Snap. Scroll um, snap. Yeah. Uh, so. So what is scroll snap already? I, I so don't basically, know. A, sc a scroll snap is when you are scrolling the the page. Then you have a, at some point you have an element that will uh, a snap in the middle uh, and will stay in the middle of your screen, for example, mm -hmm. as long as you want, uh, as long as you as a developer want. So. Mm. So it's what it is on the home page for the three little. Yeah. Okay. That's the thing. Basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, some people suggesting like Yusuf is, uh, is suggesting like maybe we have to do some tutorials on how to implement this feature uh, kind or this slice or whatever it is. Mm. Like that that could be interesting. So go ahead, don't wait for me, I guess. Okay, okay. So the plan for today is to like uh, kind of take you through the process that the call the whole journey that uh, we followed this um, this uh, year or this like nine months to release this website. So it will start with uh, first so. We are here for people. We also have Samuel, who's the developer, who worked on the website. Well, Hervé had the option of like we could work with one of their freelancer friends for that. But uh, I think for us it was also important that one of our like our internal developer, Samuel, um, uses Prismic to to build the website. So it was also something that we wanted to see, like live kind of the life of what you as users do, so that we also you know can feel for your pain points, I'd say, and real challenges and like your everyday life. So Samuel is the one who developed it and he's uh, here with us from Sweden. Um, and um, and then what we also have uh, Grace, who's our brand person and Lydia, who's our um, website person who recorded videos about uh, their process on the website. So they also will have sections um, about them. So we start about like we start from the step zero of the website, like how it started until like the release and what we have planned next for it. So the goal for you is also to tell us if this is um, consistent with how you built websites, and maybe we also can like share some learnings and some tools that we use that made our life easy throughout this process. Okay, so how it started, we had contacted Hervé. We wanted to have like a nicer looking website that fit better with um, what we thought Prismic was great for and why um, people use it. So some of the things that we were hearing a lot about are slicers, an intuitive interface, great developer experience. And if you were like, if you went to the previous website, it wasn't obvious that that was, was what, what was unique about us. So we wanted a website that shows that. So that's what we told Hervé. And then we went like into lots of loops of like, different concepts and like back and forth and trying to understand what each person wants and like, you know, not finding what we wanted. And so what we decided in the end is to actually maybe stop ourselves, make the effort, like the exercise of positioning and like, you know, putting on paper, what is Prismic, what's the value that we bring to people and who is it a great fit for? And then we went to Hervé with that and that made the process after way easier. Actually, so we made the break. It's like Romain, he said, like maybe you guys want to work a little bit on the content and then we can take over whenever you're ready. And then we start pro progressing because it felt, I guess, to you guys that we were like moving things too much around mm. and uh, it wasn't stable enough for you to start designing it. 
yeah that's uh yeah at some point we were like just iterating and just testing new things but like it was not really working and uh i think yeah one super important thing when we start like touching like the branding it's to be sure of like the for example just the value of the company like be sure of like uh what what should be the company in five years where we are going mm. um and it really helps to also for us it was a way to build a concept for the brand that will um just be logic in a way and also not going in the preferences of each other uh, mm. and more like w when we have a like a clear concept that's easy to say okay it works it works because it works the design works with the concept and not because i like this color or i don't like this color that's really what there is there is a story yeah, there is there a story, is a story in the design. Design. and it's yeah. always about the story and s i think that same thing for content I, I feel that when we start receiving like clear content and like a clear story for example i really like the for me my favorite page is the, the home page because i like the story that is just telling and i feel it's like just consistent and you go through the simple the flow, small simple, simple and at the end of the home page i i understand what is rhythmic and uh i think like illustration are here to help you maybe to understand the story <laughs> better because we scroll a lot of website all the day and sometimes we just don't read yeah so <laughs> um, absolutely yeah i think also the goal was to try to catch user and see okay let's let's catch them first and try to yes just they will have interest in the website and then they will read the the, the story yeah. and i think that's always the thing we are trying to do mm. and I, I love i love it when we start working together uh you said something with like uh, because the whole thing actually started by us wanted we wanted to do some 3d because anthony our designer uh had um done something an idea and he said like but i don't know how to implement actually it's, it will take me a lot of time to learn how to implement these in 3d because it's a lot and it's web and all of that so like okay we need a, a 3d agency and i was like okay well, well let's find and then we went to you guys um so and then you told us something we don't have to do 3d you know it's like uh, you should not do 3d just for doing 3d if it corresponds to a story then it's great but if it doesn't we can do something else that is good and uses new technology but we don't have to push yeah. for for something you know or 3d and actually you know this this period um when we started working on the website and all it was also a period where we were actually growing the mm. company was growing so this is a moment where we're asking ourselves like, you know, bigger questions. Because before we hear a lot from our clients, people say slices are great, slices, you know, simplicity of uh, the interface, slices, simplicity. These are the kind of things that we hear. But actually then we started asking ourselves, the question is like, what is the value added? Not for us, like slices are dear to us, like right? it's our unique concept that we, we nailed and we are happy about the fact that we did that. But what is it that is adding as value? We can tell, hey, you know, we have slices. And people are like, I don't have problem of slicing anything. <laughs> or why, why are you talking to me about this? And then we started the whole brand question. Like, okay, what is it that we're adding as a value, right? What, what is it interesting for? And, and then we started talking about, I remember we talked to the ex-brand uh, director at Typeform. Uh, type yeah. And he was like, <laughs> it was funny because when I we heard him talking, what what was his name? Paul. Paul. So when we asked him and he was like, uh, we hear him talking, it was too abstract. It was like, what is this guy talking about at all? And he was like, look at the transformation. And he would keep telling like, what transformation you're making? And, and to three things, I guess the user to the company and something yeah. else, you know, and, and he was always transformation. It was like, oh, doesn't, this doesn't make sense. I don't know how to apply it. But then two months after, every st everything started making sense, right? Like, yeah, yeah transformation, <laughs> of course. It's about the transformation, remember this? Yes. And then we started like, okay, it's not about the slices. What is the value? Mm. And then we went into like, okay, so we help people iterate. Not only while building the website, but also for content people to iterate and change their pages all the time. And then we started like talking about this idea of websites that are always alive. It's not only when they, you know, uh, while building them, but they always keep alive, keeping being updated. And that's 
you know, that transformation happened, transformation happened to the company of looking at, uh, okay, what's the value for the others and stuff else, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so that's a great transition to um, um, a section that Grace recorded. So Grace is um, our brand person. I love Grace. I love Grace. I love working with Grace. You like it too, right? And, uh, Have you worked with Grace? No, you didn't. You didn't get in contact with her. Maybe at some point. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, at, yeah. The beginning, yeah, yeah. at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so she's the one who like uh, organized all the work of understanding um, who are our most happy users and what's the value they're seeing in Prismic versus other tools. Documenting that so that we can go to Hervé and tell them, okay, this is what we're about now. We need a visual brand that shows exactly that. So she's she worked on that this at the start of the year. That's the transformation. That's that's <laughs> like what the website is supposed to express as value now. And so yeah, let's let's let me launch the video of Grace Great. as a good intro there. Hi, I'm Grace and I'm here to talk about how and why our team worked on evolving and aligning our positioning. If you're not familiar with it, you can think of positioning as a fancy term for helping potential customers quickly understand your product and its value. So why do we want to work on this topic and how did it help us build our website? Well, it all started with a few challenges we were facing. You may have noticed that when you're new to the headless space or you're trying to explain it to someone else, it can be a lot to wrap your mind around. The learning curve for the headless space can make it difficult to highlight the value of a product like ours. That was one challenge. The second challenge was that we had slices and that allowed Prismic to offer a really unique value. With Slices, we became an excellent product for building high quality, rapidly evolving websites that didn't slack on performance. But we still often saw feature requests for things like using Prismic for mobile apps and other things that didn't really align with this value or our vision for the product. For us, that meant we weren't clearly representing the value of Slices and our product as a whole. A lot of the knowledge we needed to make our value clearer already lived in the minds of our amazing team. So many people at Prismic spend time with our customers, digging into user research, and more. So our first round of positioning work, which you see in action today, was focused on bringing these insights forward and aligning our team around them. To do that, we drew heavily on April Dunford's approach to positioning, which she details in a book called Obviously Awesome. Through workshops and lots of collaboration, we found clarity about our value and our market category as a headless website builder. Then it was time to share those insights with the world through our website. But it's one thing to create a value proposition and other elements of brand messaging, and it's quite another to leverage them to tell a story across an entire website. So with Lydia's excellent insights and input, many discussions and more, we decided we started thinking about how our positioning and brand translated to content on a website. Together with Lydia, we created some core brand principles that we could align on ahead of the challenging work of creating content for the site. These included elements such as priori prioritizing clarity and conciseness in our content so that we didn't block what is inevitably a really important and challenging decision for our clients. They're making a big commitment when they choose us. With these messaging principles in place, our content collaboration had a great foundation. Now, let's see how Hervé brought this positioning to life in design. Go. Yeah, pretty dense as uh, a video that was recorded by Grace because she talks about several things that took us actually months to, to yeah. figure out, right? She's talking about this. Maybe she seems, she seems like, you know, Paul there for <laughs> anyone who doesn't know. <laughs> it's like transformation. transformation. I love Paul. I remember he was saying, why, why headless? Like it's, it's barbaric as a name. And I was like, yeah, I know. Headless. <laughs> barbaric as a name. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I don't, it, but it, there is a reason why, why, why it's saying, but she talks about rapidly iterating on websites. Right. And she talks about also, what is it? Brand uh, and performance. Yeah. Um, there are many things, and and why we call it he the headless website builder. What does that mean? You know, I mean, uh, people hear a lot about headless CMS, and now it's headless website builder. Do we have a section where we talk about this? Uh, not really, but we can touch on it when uh, we look at the website. But cool. in general, what we identified is that yeah, like um, what makes Prismic unique is the ability to use your technology of choice and slices. But essentially, if we think about the value that people get from it, like why exactly do you want to use your technology of choice and slices? It's because many times you want to use your own brand and you also want great performance. So these two are big pillars. Uh, why you use a CMS to, edit to be able to iterate on your content often. Mm. So 
uh, these like three big pillars are what allow companies and teams to achieve growth on their website. Mm. Um, so yeah, there's like uh, the value here is to allow companies to make no compromise between performance on the website, having websites is strongly branded, but still is easy to iterate on. Yeah. That is what like is yeah. allowed by having the properties of headless and the properties that nice is allowed. Of Pe people, builder. people, people at Prismic like to say like you can code your no code solution basically. So you actually are going to build to yeah. code with with code a solution that is no code afterwards. Yeah. And that yeah. that kind of describes it. It's a bit cryptic. Mm -hmm. If you wrote writing on the website, maybe people will get confused like code your no code whatever <laughs> it is. But <laughs> but but it's uh, it's, it's a real there, there is a real yeah. meaning behind, right? We had so many variations <laughs> for that like build a builder. Yeah, and, build uh, we we love we love this. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The page builder builder. <laughs> yeah. pa page builder builder. How about that? <laughs> Website builder builder. Twice builder. Okay. Well, that's fun. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I'm wondering from the you know the people that are watching us, if there is anyone that is going through an exercise of rebranding, repositioning, or like uh, you know reunderstanding the values of of their product, and uh, tell us about you know also your their experience just you know write down whatever you know questions also that you are interested in in our journey and we can match you know you can match it mm -hmm. to your journey and see how, how what does it mean to you and how how do you relate to that so go ahead and and ask questions if you are doing going through a similar exercise yeah so what's next so all of this is what we went to Hervé with then and we were like okay now we know who we are and what's the value we bring to people and we know like maybe a headless website builder is a better definition of what we are and the value that we bring than headless CMS. So now can you please help us make a visual brand for that? And um, Romain and Fix they went on their side and they created a great <laughs> a brand, brand book, book already that brand we book. love and we still like refer back to it now many times <laughs> we need to refresh it i guess to update yeah, it with all what we understood it. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good yeah. thing yeah. Yeah. so i have it here on my um on my screen so what i suggest i do is that i will scroll and uh Roma, if you want and if you want to comment so on it okay, uh, no. i can right. well, like we can yeah. we can move so that's what you presented to yeah. us once on so the first call together <laughs> It was not really a, like a brand book, but more like a proposal of yeah. like, uh, so this happened like just after we paused the project and mm -hmm. then you came back to us and say, okay, now we know where we want to go. Uh, Sadek, you were talking about like uh, transformation, but I know that on previous iteration was a lot talking about repetition. And then- uh, Yeah, I remember we, that. Yeah, yeah, we went for um, a way where repetition was also part of the animation, but uh, I think, it was we don't we can't really show the previous iteration because we don't have it right now but mm. um i think it was maybe a bit too cold and like repetition was like you know uh um not not really playful and i think that that was also part of the problem mm. uh and uh, i think you felt that it was not representing like the prismic energy or mm. the prismic feeling um and that's also why we paused the project and, and actually that was the fact that so there is when we raised um yeah. uh, funds like the v the vc event where wh when was it two years ago or something yeah. and we we wanted there was like this kind of slice contact uh, concept and it was like you can you can create a lot of pages yeah. and it was like a lot of pages repetition how about we capture that and we did actually a landing page yeah for the VC, VC yeah. announcement, which used that that kind of uh, visual, mm. uh, yeah, thing, and then yeah, it was it was a little bit cold. It wasn't yeah, uh, featuring. I, I think it was maybe more like center on performances, like just yeah. uh, build yeah. faster, etc. So, yeah. I think like the build fast is still a value of Prismic, but I think it was just this aspect that was represented. Yeah, that you can, yeah, that you can be productive okay, in building yeah. a lot of pages, that yeah. repetition part. And I think after that, we... Um, maybe we maybe you can show that, that part if you can still find it. Oof, we, <laughs> we redirected <laughs> that page now. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, yes. we don't have it anymore. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I feel that after that, uh, you came back to us and then it was also more about not just like building website faster, but it was also like, um having your own brand represented on your website yeah. having your story told on your website mm. and i think this was a way more interesting than gold like mm. the f the f the rapidity of it was still there but then it was more like uh, okay i want 
because I think that's what the whole company wants to have. And it was our exercise as well. Exactly, yes. So it was not easy to just like tell this story of like building website on a website. <laughs> that is yeah. built with your solution. That's uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're, you're welcome in the club. Welcome, welcome in the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We are. We yeah, so, okay. <laughs> so then. No, but that's that's the difference also because before it was like you can produce a lot of pages, very solution oriented, very technology oriented, yeah. and you were like, no. I mean, yes, the blocks are interesting, but why are they interesting? Because you can tell your story basically yeah. on your website thanks to uh, like a few blocks. You can have a rich way to tell your story in, in a branded way. Story yeah. is also about, you know, the visuals. The story is not only the text, the visuals. Yeah. And that's the, the angle you came up uh, yeah. Came yeah, exactly. from. Yeah. Yeah. So we go through the yeah, yeah. presentation? Sorry. Okay. Um. <laughs> and by the way, just an interruption. A lot of people are asking questions about the technology. I guess we will have a phase yeah. where we talk a, Some a will section. Some uh, will, will be here. By the end, maybe they will talk yeah. about the technology and we'll answer all these questions. So keep asking the questions about the technology, the stack, and anything that you're interested in, and we're going to answer in, in, in that per, uh, part. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah, this was the, the proposal. I started with, a, like, a mood board of... Uh, some references that we like and what we liked about them it was like kind of the simplicity of uh, shapes yeah and, and the flexibility of it because you can combine a lot of shapes and create uh, basically uh, another mm -hmm. shape uh, and that's basically what you can do with uh, with prismic yeah yeah, well yeah this combine different shapes yeah. getting to another shape yeah. okay cool this kind of component logic that you put together to create things yes. something else yeah yeah that was the, I think the 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 basement of the of, of the yeah. idea here. Um, so then we try also to uh, here summarize what was the kind of brand elements that will uh, be in the new Prismic brand. Uh, first, it was this idea of frame. So the frame it was uh, really to represent first thing the browser. Yeah. So the things you are using to yeah. navigate. Yeah. Then the frame was also a way to represent the slices. Mm -hmm. um, and it was also a good way, and we reference it in this uh, document. Uh, we saw os also the frame as, uh, like in the comic book, uh, you have a lot of different frames where stories happen. And we feel it was kind of nice, especially with the aesthetic we developed. And it was like kind of matching, and we were trying to tell a story. So mm. that's why these elements is uh, present on the brand. So you, you, so who was working on this? You and and yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. Um, then uh, we yeah, as uh, FX was uh, telling, we we was really liking this idea of blocks and elements to like build like a story. Um, and the cool thing about it is like it's super flexible. You can basically tell whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, so those elements are for us, they are like composant that we mix and uh, yeah, to build uh, illustrations. Basically the same thing that uh, than the slices. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So the frame, in the blocks, you book, you, like in a way you, you're putting the blocks in the frame yeah. to yeah. make a story. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> kind of what's happening here. Exactly. Then, yeah, you're, yeah. you're making the presentation <laughs> for them. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Maybe I, I guess I remember it. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Then we was uh, yeah just explaining uh, how to mix like this idea of frame and sometimes um, also going out of the frame that was part also of mm. the of the brand. Uh, also the going out of the brand is also <laughs> showing like the flexibility and the fact that you can go further yeah. and you're not like just constrained. Uh, so that was also another element that we wanted to develop. Yeah, because I imagine if in the brand everything has sh sh imagine the branding was like okay we should always frame things so that it corresponds to the story it will look a bit rigid and yeah. small and tight whereas getting it out it shows like okay still flexibility yeah. in there yeah yeah exactly uh there was a try on changing yeah. the logo <laughs> can't forget that. okay logo is always a hard to we were yeah. talking change with our logos we can like, just <laughs> everyone is emotional about their logo <laughs> Um, so then we're, we're not ready yet, I <laughs> guess. There's some point <laughs> where we'll be ready. We're not uh, ready. Yeah, we was just trying to align things with more like this this block approach, yeah. but I think uh, it was yeah not um, good enough. So we just uh, I think also just logo is like uh, ten percent of your brand. So mm. 
don't spend too Some much Some people will disagree, but you're being nice to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the existing logo who still worked with the new brand. So yeah, that's yeah, also no, one that's thing. true, that's true. Yeah, that's um, that. there is that as well. The typography, so yeah, we were just explaining why we choose, uh, so this font, it's called uh, Rational Display, and why we use uh, this font as a display font. Um, then the colors, that's a pretty important elements, and uh, so yeah, it takes time to find the right palette, and it's also evolved uh, from mm -hmm. what you yeah. will see here that's and what is, is implemented. Um, yeah, but basically this is the very beginning, the very of, beginning. of this brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's colors and also how to mix them together. Mm -hmm. um, we also talk a little bit about photo photography and uh, how we should represent uh, like people that are using Prismic. Mm -hmm. uh, creative people, uh, yeah, I remember creative that. People. And, um, and then this was like kind of some like Examples, what we call yeah. Yeah, brand application. But yeah, it was really to stretch the, the brand that, that we, we were creating to see if uh, it can work uh, on uh, like uh, commercial displays or yeah. everything. And that's cool, like here you can see the frame and the elements that come on top of the yes. frame and different elements. Yeah. Cool, and so that was really cool. And so it's also like you try to do it on like videos that we have on YouTube. Yes, yeah. on the live. Uh. And the <laughs> this live <laughs> event, do we have the live somewhere? <laughs> no, we don't, but uh, we had it at another places. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That was cool. And, um, and so, so, yeah. So remember that, Evan, when you sent this, like everyone was relieved because we ha were having doubts. Like, this is not working. <laughs> this is not working. <laughs> I was like, we did so many iterations and we're still not making it. And there is a problem in there. We have to do things differently, remember? Yeah. And, and then you send this and it was like, I remember I was talking to Anthony. I was like, okay, now there is a thing. That's the thing that I expect from Hervé. This is what I want. This is why we hire an agency like them. And it was like a beginning to a fresh start. And it's like with a lot of perspective, like, okay, we're going with a lot of horizon. Like, okay, this is going to be something. Okay. Yeah. Remember that kind yeah. of energy. But like fun fact is like when uh, Anthony and Benjamin like send us like the first version they was working on, they present us something with some blocks in 3D with kind of eh, same perspective, etc. But um, at this moment, and it was like uh, two years ago, it was not really relevant because we, I mean, we haven't think about all the, the mm. story, etc. But um, if we think about this iteration, it was like, I think, pretty on spot. And uh, then we had to do all this exercise together and finally go back to something that maybe <laughs> was yeah. the good direction. Mm. Maybe yeah. they That's had good intuition, but w w one thing is also that now that we had the strategy of what how we wanted to, what yeah. we want to say, yeah. it was easy to say, okay, well, yeah. it, it fits with exactly. what we want to say. So it was much easier to validate yeah, yeah. it as well. And that's a very good, big uh, difference, big change that uh, transformation that happened <laughs> in Prism, <laughs> uh, compared to before. We are very much an intuition, um, you know, oriented kind of company. We have a lot of, you know, we see a lot of things with clients. We talk to clients, we look at the product and all of that. And then we have intuition. We have feeling that this is should be working in that way. And this is how we used to do stuff. But in these last two years, we there has been a big transformation of being like, OK, let's put things on paper. Let's define things and understand what we want first. And uh, it doesn't mean that we kill intuition. It means like we should use both tools. Yeah. Intuition is so important because there's some kind of hidden intelligence inside intuition, I believe. But when you define things, then you give your brain some kind of information uh, more defined. And then the intuition will work even better because you will understand, OK, this is what's important for me today. And I'm going to use it for, for what I'm creating, basically. Yeah, definitely. So that's a transformation that happened of like, OK, let's define what we want and what we need and why is it important for us. Yeah. yeah. And so the way this evolved after is that we kept working in Figma. So like I can show you quickly what uh, what it looked like. Let me go. I need to close this. Um, then we did some <coughs> little tri some other tries. So here I can show you. So we kept we kept doing a few things. So there was like some tries of the brand book on um, different ways to show like keyboard stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think we tried it on. Let's see. We tried. We tried it on news. Maybe letters. scroll through all the iterations. There's so many iterations. <laughs> out this there. was like a newsletter. We we tried on different things. 
Um, we tried on the videos as well. I don't know if we can see them. Well, that's that's what happened. At yeah. least we were like yeah. trying a few things. Uh, and at the same time, something that happened, what was happening simultaneously is that we were saying, okay, this like brand book or brand idea or visual branding uh, concept, it works in like these are the different formats we will want to like implement it. So on the other side, uh, Lydia, who's working on the website, she started creating outlines for three main pages that we knew we were needed or we wanted on the new website, w a home page, of course, <laughs> a developer page and a marketer page because it's a tool for both. And we knew like we always had struggles like talking to both in one page. So we knew we wanted to make a page for developers and a page for marketers to explain Prisma to each. And so Lydia is not here today, but she recorded a video to sh also explain her process on how she was working on outlines of pages and how she structured the whole website project after to be able to collaborate with Hervé for design and Samuel for development so that, yes, like the team was progressing on the brand, but she also was structuring the website project. And I so much like one thing about Lydia is that she's goal oriented. She's not ego oriented. So whatever works for the plan, for whatever we're getting to go getting towards, she's going to be happy about it. She needs just to know that, OK, how does it work for our goal? And that is rare. Most people, me, you, and a lot of people, I don't know about you, but like it's like it's hard to abandon an idea that we brought. But for her, it's not so, you know, it's not so important. What's the most important is like how close are we are getting to our goal. And that has been so important because there's so many people, opinionated people around the table, yeah. and we needed a person that was <laughs> not that, that will be connecting, like, okay, yeah. this is good, this is good, this is. This is better and uh, you know keeps going like this so. and reminding us of what we decided what we're yeah. here to do like uh, you know you, yes 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 go ahead go one ahead. thing that really was great is like i don't know about how people feel when they think about their website project but it's a mountain you know it's like it's it looks big and long as a project and it took us nine months so it was a bit of a mountain but i think by structuring everything we could see progress like every week we were updating things and checking things in the to do this so that she made us feel that there's progress. I remember there's a point, you know, I'm a CEO, right? And I behaved like a CEO. As in, in the you know, when things are getting together, I would go like, I would like to change this. And I would like to put this instead. And I would like to go with a concrete idea. Like I want this text to be this text instead. <laughs> and then I was like, I didn't understand what happened because that was the way it was going before. And it was like, okay, why do you want this? And why is it important? And is it important for the first release or is it important after? Like a lot of questions of like how important it is because we're ma trying to make a progress and we need just simply to understand. And I, in the beginning it was like, you don't want what I'm uh, inputting, but actually it wasn't that. It was like, just tell me if it's important, I'm going to listen and uh, tell me why, what are the, your reasons and, and maybe we can come up with a better solution. So basically just with these kind of questions, like, okay, I have to think about that now. And it was uh, another you know good change that uh, you know happened like, okay, uh, this is important for us for the release. This is important for afterwards. Anyway, go for the video. Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Lydia, and uh, you've already heard about the awesome work on the positioning, brand, and design. And what I want to share with you now is just a bit about our process on how we, uh, between uh, Grace, Nuha, and me, worked on the content itself for our core pages and what helped us quite a bit was to actually start with a sort of an outline. As you can see here, there's a lot of um, comments um, uh, that we uh, kind of communicated as well through Notion. But um, how we actually worked on the outline itself is that we kind of structure uh, this table here uh, to contain the information about the sections that we want to include on the page, what information we want to transmit, what kind of the summary of the content is, uh, and the action that we want to trigger. And then after we are kind of clear on those goals and after we kind of mark the sections as done so that we don't come back to them as often as we would like, uh, we start working on the copy itself that gives us a lot of clarity between us on um, you know, what we want to say before we decide how we want to say it. And um, if you're a marketer like me, you've probably uh, read a bunch of uh, 
posts that tell you that you should always start with an outline. So that's um, uh, that's not new. Uh, but as you know, there's not a silver bullet. Uh, each page is different. Uh, the way you work through uh, your outlines uh, can differ as well between uh, you and your team and how you like to work. Uh, but uh, definitely do try to um, have something uh, about that before you start working on the copy, it definitely helps a lot. Uh, so I will just quickly scroll through this page so you uh, see some of it. As you can see, there are still some open comments, and this is definitely not the final, final version of the page that you will see on our website because we also did a lot of iterations in Figma as well. Okay, so uh, next thing. Uh, that I would also like to share with you is actually how we kind of structured the whole project so that we had uh, these three pages. We had some idea around how the whole um, design will look like. And uh, now it was the time to actually start working on the whole website rebrand. Uh, and uh, it was part of our Q4 goals as well. So uh, that's why I have some numbers here. Uh, but what was important for us was that we kind of always keep these brand resources that Grace shared in mind. So they were uh, the top of mind as we were uh, working through the pages, kind of defining the team, who's working on what, uh, how are we communicating uh, through Slack channels, through weekly meetings, uh, copy syncs. Uh, so kind of just like uh, keeping the conversation going uh, at all times uh, between the team. And then uh, one of the things that we were also kind of needed to define was which pages are key for us to launch, uh, what would uh, be the best, uh, you know, like we all want to launch with everything, but we have limited time, limited resources. How do we do this? So we had to structure the pages that are essential to launch. Um, we had high and medium. That's uh, what you will see on the website. But we also had some pages that uh, had to wait. And also we had some uh, pages that we needed to remove. Uh, some were easy because we were already replacing them. But some were a bit more challenging to decide uh, because we do want to have them in the future. But we just couldn't get to them now so that that was kind of how we prioritized everything and then kind of uh, as we work through we had the list of ideas what we needed to do before launch at launch and then after uh, launch kind of building our uh, list of uh, our, our wish list uh, so that uh, something that keeps us excited after uh, the launch happens and things that we will work on to kind of iterate on the website um, this is how we tracked all the pages through different statuses. As you know, the website process is not a waterfall process, but some of these uh, stages happen in parallel, which is why this helped us quite a bit to know which boxes uh, we open for each of these pages. And as I mentioned, we had the pre-launch, launch and post-launch, and just like a bunch of ideas for us to uh, look forward to um, and to improve. So thank you for listening. I'm sorry I'm not here with you today, but enjoy the rest of the meetup. Bye. And 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 that structure that Lydia talked about was so important for us to get progressing because actually the the, the one feeling is that when you are opening up the, such a box like a box like you know redoing the website, every time you look at the page, even after doing it, you will find you, you told me this often like there are many things I would like to improve. You know, and even you finish a page, you look at it the, the, the day after, it's like, I can improve that more. But then, you know, having this structure and understanding what is it exactly that is important for us in the first iteration, guess what, guys? We're going to reiterate on it and we're going to improve it. But just let, let's see what the essential for us for the first release, not to keep working endlessly on this. So yeah, the structure was very yeah. important. We have lots of things on the post launch kind of list. Which is also good because I feel like there's like now we launched the website and there's still lots of dynamism in the team and everyone is like it was just one step and we're going to keep doing lots of things after. So it also like, you know, while we were building, we were seeing the website release as just one step and that there's lots of things that's going to happen also after. So it also allowed us to like have that perspective of don't be too in love with your ideas. Like we can do them after what we need to do is just to release this website and like do something good with it. So, yeah. 
So there, there are questions about all, not only about the technology, which we're going to address afterwards, and I, I'm sure Samuel is noting them and he's getting to them. There's also uh, there are qu questions about user research, I guess, and whether we did that. And you're going, we're going also to talk well, about yeah, that. We can also talk yeah. about that. Yeah, we did that. Uh, okay, so maybe that's a great moment to bring in Samuel because now, okay, we have this uh, visual brand, like this uh, brand concept, visual concept that we said, okay, this works well with what the message that we want to uh, deliver. And uh, Lydia was creating the outlines of pages, so that was the moment where we were giving this outline to the team of Hervé, and uh, Sam and them were like also collaborating on the designs and starting to implement as soon as we had like first pages ready. So first, hi Sam. Hello. <laughs> let, let, let me get a, a proper introduction to Samuel, okay? <laughs> let me get that because it's important. It's important to me. So Hervé are users of Prismic yeah. and that's mm -hmm. good. So we're working with our community. That's really good. Mm -hmm. And I, I love it. You know, the moment where we, we started having a little bit more cash because of the VC with like I was what is important for us? It's important for us that we work with our community. It was an important one of the goals, right? And that's why we created the whole this whole thing of Prismic Meetup, but also working with you guys. But Samuel, Samuel is the one who won the PlayStation, the PS4, yeah. uh, when we had an event. Context. What, is, what was it, like one year, two years ago? Yeah, two years ago now, I think. Slice Contest, Christmas 2020, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you know what? So... And then Samuel ended up working with us, and I was very happy about that because it's one more step, you know, to go towards, um, well, working with our community from one side, and the other thing is like to have a person that is always specialized in using Prismic, building pages with Prismic, and getting to the product team feedback about, you know, I'm having this problem. This is uh, repeating a lot, and I would like uh, us to find a solution so that it's we speed things up in this kind of content in that other context. I would like to, I wanted to have users inside Prismic that actively are using the product. Lydia is one. Yeah. Lydia and Grace, yourself as well. And there is Samuel from the developer side. So that's Samuel. So I, I will get let you, uh, give the microphone back to you to ask the questions. Yeah. One thing that is interesting that uh, I thought uh, it would be interesting to discuss with Samuel and um, Roman de Fix here is that many times when we were doing these meetups, one thing that we considered users do is that they create every page on Figma and then they break their pages into slices. And this is the moment where they start building the slices and creating the variations and all of that. And for us, it happened differently, actually. So maybe Samuel, you can talk also a bit about that on when did you start actually building the website? And how is that a bit different from the process that I described that we thought users were following? Yeah, actually, the, the process you describe is kind of the process I'm used to from agencies from before. Like you do the design first and then you split it up. And if you if you are a creative developer who is also kind of creating the design or is part of that, you, you kind of know uh, already when designing how, how to build a page. Uh, but you at least you you're used to having the design ready. Uh, we didn't do that because we wanted to get on with building. Uh, and uh, I mean, we spent a lot of time on iterating on content and design, and we wanted to start building. And of course, there are some challenges with, with this approach as well. Like um, you need some kind of robust component system on the, on the code, uh, side of things because uh, things is like shifting around in Figma as, as we as we progress on the design but also it's very important to have a designer like like in this case we have a uh, designers who work in Prismic and also are creative developers as FX so it's really important to have that kind of connection that you feel you're working with some someone who knows the code side of things as well and that really helps but yeah, we, we, we started as soon as we had the kind of the homepage layout ready. Mm. Uh, so a lot of slices were missing at that point, but at the same time, we kind of knew like the language and stuff, so. Yeah. And so how does, how was the process then when like FX was finishing new pages? How was your process for you, for you when like new pages and new slices were, if, were would appear on, on the designs? Uh, so at first, uh, I kind of talked to FX and, and said that I think that they should start breaking up uh, designs pretty early into 
slices and components because that's how we're going to build stuff. But uh, a bit longer in in the project, I realized that okay, this slice is changing a bit and maybe it makes sense to combine those two slices uh, instead. So maybe it's like this in this design process, maybe that's not the right decision to make there. Maybe I'll make it while developing. So we, we kind of skip that to, like I said, okay, you can hold off a bit on like doing perfect slices with components and variations in Figma. Uh, we, we, we save that till afterwards. And then we look at the design and I figure out what slices to combine while developing since, since yeah. we're like progressing. So you're, when you're talking about the combining, actually taking two slices and saying like, okay, these are variations. Yeah, this is the same slice. Yeah and making variations out of that. And you're saying like, mm -hmm. you wanted, you, you were like, okay, let's slow down. Let's see th how, how slices will, will look like, and then it will be the right time to refactor them or to implement them differently in code, right? Yeah. Cool. Nice. And so that was super convenient for us because I could see the website getting built as we were doing new pages. Mm -hmm. And so it, it felt like the moment we would finish, almost the moment where we would finish the page designs, we will get the websites ready. And I don't know how it was for you guys to have like, you know, a staging environment at least with like a website that looks like Figma, but it doesn't look like we're gonna ha have to start a whole new part of the work afterwards. Like it was still yeah. progressing along the way. So yeah, yeah no, it, it was great to have uh, a staging environment because it's it's still a bit different uh, to have screens on, on Figma and screens on a browser because uh, it depends uh, obviously of the size of yeah. uh, your screen, your resolution. Etc. Yeah, you had the full and experience. Yeah, and uh, and then you can make a little bit of adjustment, like on the font size. Maybe it it was good on Figma, but on uh, on a specific uh, screen size, it's not that good actually. And you have to to add some breakpoints and a uh, new font size and and, uh, and everything. Yeah, and I know you've been w talking a lot also on how to implement some of the I don't know the animations yeah. for instance, and it allowed us to have enough time to figure that out while we were designing at the same yeah, time, not telling that like blocking so that also was that also was a good thing about you having implemented websites <laughs> in the past that like that man had someone to talk to and to ask uh opinions too so yeah absolutely how was it Samuel? did you feel like it was all on your side or at least it was good to have no uh, it's super comfortable to work with with uh, designers who have developer experience as well it's really nice cool okay so we were like having this website in staging and I know lots of people have questions for you on the on the, the stack. Um, one thing that I want to mention that you asked a question about Sadek is that, yes, we wanted to do user research because this whole thing was new. And we also like we had lots of questions while we were was using the website. So we still wanted to test some like assumptions or just the, like the foundational pages. So what we did is that um, we used a, a tool called Maze that uh, our user researcher uh, recommended to do um, a few unmoderated um, research or uh, um, tests uh, with our users. So what we did is that for people who just signed up to Prismic, um, we sent them a message to say, hey, we're testing uh, new pages for the website. Would you like to test them? And they received like screenshots of the new websites and they would like answer questions about them. And so that is that was super useful as well because we were able to get feedback on the website um before we actually release it so we focus that on the three main pages that we that kind of then define the whole direction of the website so the home page the developer page and the marketer page on a lot of the time on like mostly like is the content clear and does it sound appealing to users like is it is like do they see what it's used for or what is this tool for kind of do they understand it and so i can show you how it looks like if you want but i, I don't know if that's uh uh, if that's gonna be, yeah, useful. <laughs> so I can give a, like a quick uh, a quick tour. So it looks like that for us. So we have a, a version for marketing people and a version for um, developers, and uh, they don't get the same page like the developers and the marketers. They get the home page, and they and then each of them will get like either the marketer page or um, the developer page. And so we ask them a few different questions depending on what we want to test. So we can see, um, like here, for instance, they read the text 
and then they need to fill in the blanks so we can see if our content makes sense so it's natural to read um, uh, here like we show them the developer page and we ask them what do you think this page is about so quickly like having a glance at, at it do they understand what it is and we did that both for developers and for marketers as our goal was to make it a website mm. that is appealing for both and and clear for both so it's also like um, for us it was a big change we didn't want to a b test or anything when we released we wanted just like we knew we were going to anyways change the website but it was still interesting to get some like qualitative information on how people would understand it so yeah that's uh, to answer the question that's we got a lot of good, uh, very good insights that we're going yeah. anyway to implement we are officially closing the research on on friday so there's a few things that uh, we still have to like we're still leaving it there so we didn't do the the uh, results yet but other than user research we still have a lot of questions for Samuel about the stack and Go ahead. and the tools that you used are you ready sam yeah sure <laughs> so already there are questions about the stack what did you use there so basically there is next and there is tailwind as people said in the chat as well uh, and then we have gsap for most of the basic animations uh, and then there is for the hero on the home page developer page and the marketing page we have lottie which is like json exported from after effects so can you get, tell, tell us a little bit more about the tool lottie yes about about Lottie, uh, yes, I guess please. FX is uh, yeah, even better explaining um, that since he made the animation. Exploring. Surprise, now you have to talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so basically, Lottie is a, a renderer uh, that you use on, uh, on After Effects uh, that, uh, that will uh, export your animation um, into a JSON file or uh, a .lottie file, uh, which mm -hmm. is a compressed uh, JSON file. Mm -hmm. Um, and when you are creating an animation on After Effects, uh, if you want to use Lotit, you have to uh, to animate only shapes and uh, strokes uh, without mm. any effects because it's not a, it's not a, um, compatible with a, with a Lotit export. All right. And then when you have yeah. this <laughs> JSON file, uh, the developer <laughs> implements it. Uh, it's and uh, on the web page, it's basically SVG that's animated. Okay, so when when would you go like for for this approach compared to other like other approaches? What's uh, interesting about it? So because I, I I saw a chat and I didn't actually go through it. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, we had uh, three ways uh, of doing animation. So Loti obviously uh, we also have uh, WebGL, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, live uh, animation in 3D mm -hmm. and everything, or just uh, videos. Yeah, uh, and actually on the home page you have a, a combination of uh, Lottie animations uh, and also uh, videos. Mm -hmm. um, so, so which one is videos? Um, those uh, are the three, uh, the three ones. Yeah. The so ones. the one, the one, the one in the hero. This is the video. No, this one, uh, the one on the on the hero is a Lottie animation. Yes. And the three ones that are snapping are the the actual. So video you forward the video basically where you scroll or something, right? Um. No, when you are scrolling, the video is like just like uh, automatic. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, that's right. Yeah, that's right. It's yeah, just right, playing. The, okay, the, yeah, cool. the, the video animations is controlled by GSAP and scroll trigger to yeah. mm -hmm. detect when the user is there and change nice. videos and stuff like that. Uh, but the reason we we uh, went for Lottie for the heroes uh, are basically most because of the style of the animations. Mm -hmm. uh, we needed the lines to be crisp. Uh, ah, yeah, since okay, it's SVG, yeah. they are crisp. With with video, you have compression problems with those kind of graphics. Yes. And if you want videos to be sharp, they need to be big in size. <coughs> yeah, and you have also a problem. Mm, that's the discussion that I remember. Colors. Go ahead. You have a problem now. Of, of colors, uh, like f uh, colors. when you're of colors. Yeah. When you are on the developer page, for example, you are on a dark theme, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but you need a transparent video, for example, mm -hmm. and it's not uh, uh, something that you can do with a MP4, for example. Mm -hmm. You can do it with a web uh, webm videos, but it's not compatible with like older version of Safari, for, exa for mm -hmm. example. So that's why we used Lottie uh, also because uh, it was really sharp and uh, uh, a, a lot. Uh, uh, it was optimized to load and everything. Nice. 
I, I, I see I see there's a new question about this in the chat maybe answer that directly um, yeah can you answer that question so, first? So, so, yeah so it's curious about why the banners are lofty and the section with scroll our videos and so basically first we went with videos for everything but then we had a problem of the sharpness and stuff since since uh, the hero ones are not like boxed with borders uh, you you kind of see the the borders around the shapes and also they uh, as fx said with transparency and colors so they needed to be lotty but for the scroll videos they are framed and you kind of don't see the quality issues of video in the these ones so we kind of stick with video there because lotty takes time to do as well and export yep nice yeah cool and so, good transition on that. I, mean, I don't know if it's a good transition, but since I have you both, uh, one of the um, so okay. So then we released the website. We were able to to have like the staging environment and keep progressing on the on the pages. At some point, we had all the pages ready and the website ready. One great thing as well is that um, FX was able also to do like a whole. We all like tested uh, the websites for different uh, like for all our different specialties. But I think that's also it from like what you imagined in terms of design and experience. And some of the things were just like sometimes misunderstanding from um, what we thought it would be in yeah. Figma and then how you imagined it. And so uh, one of the great things that Lydia put together that I thought would be interesting to show you is the website backlog. So let me try to find it first. Uh, it's uh, here, so in the rebrand plan. We have uh, the backlog at the bottom here. And so this was great for us because it allowed us to like have clear visibility on what we need to do. And so here for like Samuel, he had a list of things to do. So there's little uh, icons. Cherry was cherry on the cake. So it's really like if you have time before the release, but not necessary. Yoga person was also like it's chill if you can fix it. And the fires were the things that we need to do before we release. Um, but what was good is that even the, fig the, the feedback that you left uh, FX, we had added it here and it was by page. So it allowed us to have like clear visibility of everything that we need to do for the release. And we have things for pre-launch, things for the moment that we don't can to do before the launch that we have to do at the moment of the launch and things even post-launch. So we have lots of things here, but it really structured our work and it allowed us then to reach the launch moment uh, effectively. So that was cool. And now in the post-launch things, we have a lot of uh, elements that we need to still do. And I think that would be like that, that was going to be like a good closing kind of to this meetup is to see like it doesn't stop at the launch moment. There's lots of things still to, to build. One main aspect is to, you know, all the uh, like brand book that we presented and the guidelines, we have to build them just to make sure that this grows in the right direction. So it's one of the things that um, you guys are working on these days together. Yes. Um, so I would just want to share like uh, maybe where we are now and uh, already like what we're like rebuilding. So this is like the status of what we are now. So last version. And just to say something for you, FX, that it's already ha was shared with uh, our designers who are doing like an experiment on what we call the Academy for the Docs. Okay. And they found it very useful and very easy to use for like uh, first mockups. So awesome. very good <laughs> first style guide I was told to tell you. Yes. <laughs> well, actually, the, uh, I heard, yeah, I talked to Ono quickly about it and he was like, it's uh, very easy, very, very easy to kind of combine these elements and then to make things look like the brand. Like you wouldn't, and that's the whole definition is like yep. if I can take these elements and very quickly do, do something and then show it to someone and then that someone tells me I, 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 it's a prismic thing that that means we succeeded the mission right yep. so that's cool it seems to we have one case of that yeah. and you're gonna redo also like the because what what we saw initially on the brand presentation wasn't what we have now so mm -hmm. I'm guessing also we're gonna redo the whole brand presentation yes. to realign with what yeah. we have now cool. Very good. nice Cool. And also on our side, on on the content team side, we can also like reflect back on our all our um, process for building pages. And our goal is also to like to shrink down the time it takes us to like do outlines, so that also we can iterate some pages quickly. So that would be super useful because we're still working together now, <laughs> because <laughs> we have the blog that we need to to migrate, which we didn't migrate for the release. Um, and we also have like uh, lots of assets. We talked about newsletters, of videos 
for YouTube and lots of other things that we need to build. And I know the team yeah. is asking me a lot also about like slide decks and lots of things. So different places where we can apply the brand. Um, Actually, even PRE wants to change the studio with the new branding. We're gonna uh, rebrand this place. <laughs> so we're gonna with paint and, and you know I don't know do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> so lots of things to establish. So it's f again, it helps to have perspective that this is just the start and that now we're like we build the websites. It's like we lay down some kind of foundations of what the brand looks like and what's the one application of the brand on the website. We need to like structure the foundations to have like a proper style guide and mm -hmm. and uh, and brand presentation. Um, but it's really cool to see that it's not coming from nowhere. Like there was a strategy behind, and now it's coming to place. And we have ways to measure it and to improve the website itself, but also to spread the brand mm -hmm. in different places. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Yeah, that's cool to see that the brand is easy to use. And yeah. as Sadek was saying, you can create easily visual because sometimes there is some brand that are super cool when they just released but then uh, people internally can't maintain the brand. can't so use it no yes yeah yeah especially <laughs> when you apply too many filters to photos or too yeah, many things and then mm. it becomes impossible to use a brand. yeah or going for technology like 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 if we uh, at some point um, we was talking about 3d but like mm. 3d is costly to do it's also you need to have 3d designer internally uh here it's whole um just like vector thing so mm. you can handle it like easily yeah and you give it like a few a few objects and then we throw them on yeah. on, on on certain frames and so quickly it will look like something yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's what they did in in one week they were they were doing some kind of academy for like a different path for learning prismic and in one week, I saw they did. They were like doing designs on Figma, and it looks <laughs> like the brand. So yeah, myself, I was happy. Cool. So yeah. that's good. <laughs> we can show you after if you're if you're curious to yeah, see I it. Yeah, I want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, well, I guess that uh, was pretty much uh, it for me. Oh no, no, there's one last thing that I wanted to show, is that this also has value for the product team. So along the way, what the team has been doing, and we need to read to continue doing that, is that we have like a big feedback box. A page on um, Notion where we put all our feedbacks and learnings from uh, working on the website so we'll keep adding to it but that was one of our big goals as well is to like you know learn from the process and identify opportunities not only on Prismic but on the whole process of building a website like what part of the work happens in Figma and what part of the work happens in Prismic and what parts of the work happens in Notion uh, how do you like establish a plan for building and launching the website so we noted all of that. We're sharing it also with our internal team product and also other teams so that they better understand what users go through. And uh, yeah, hopefully that also will serve us as a team to have a better product to serve our goals and also serve you as users. So now next step is how do we keep iterating on it? But that's uh, just to, so to show it was also to It just started. It. Now it, yes. has, it has started. We have uh, everything, all the tools that we need to keep iterating on pages and make something relevant for our users. Yeah, yeah. and Samuel is going to keep adding to it. I know it's one, one of his uh, one of his uh, personal goals to get better at note taking and adding lots of ideas for for the product team. So yeah. Cool. Well, I guess with that, that's it, right? Yes. Well, thank you very uh, everyone for being here and for this uh, um, great event. Th thank you for all the people also that are on the chat that uh, asked us a lot of questions. We, we still have questions we didn't answer. I hope someone will, will jump and, and answer them on the, on the chat or on in the comments or something. But that was great. Thank you for that. We'll keep uh, working more and we'll keep releasing th things. And if you have any other questions, reach out to us. And th also thanks for all the people that went through the user research. It's so important for us. Yeah. Uh, and it helps us be make more relevant website and products. Thank you, everyone. Until next time. Yes. Uh, well, see you next time. I don't know what the topic Me will be. I don't know when, when it will be. I don't know. It's next next Wednesday of the last Wednesday of the month. So, so Pierre Yves knows. Well, yeah. See you then. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks, Elvie. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Have Goodbye. a good day. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks.